Hey y'all, it's Raj with EV365. Today we're looking at the Tesla to J1772 adapter by EV Dance. Alright, here it is, the Tesla to J1772 charging adapter by EV Dance. Um, EV Dance did send this out to me to review, but everything I say in this uh, review will be my opinion. Uh, they did not tell me what to say, so I'll give you an honest review of it and what I think about it. Um, and they did send this to me, obviously, because I've gotten a certain amount of subscribers now. So I'd like to thank those of you who have tuned in and watched and subscribed. And eventually we'll start uh, giving some of the products that we get to review out to our subscribers and doing draws and things like that. So again, I appreciate it. That'll be our way to kind of pay it back. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and take the, the adapter out so you can take a look at it. Um, so yeah, it comes in this little bitty box. So you can see this is gonna be a pretty small adapter, uh, which was why I was interested in taking a look at this one. They gave me the options of several to choose from. Um, and then it comes wrapped in bubble wrap and then this little foam packing that's pretty popular for electronic products. Um, and there is a little tag. Ooh, we got some static. We got a little tag here that's on there. Um, yeah, basically all that's saying is just make sure if you've got a Tesla wall connector at home that it's set to all vehicles and not just to Tesla vehicles only. Um, and we, you know, we have done that on this universal wall connector, um, but we are still having issues with that working with non-Tesla vehicles. And I know that's a common issue uh, for a lot of folks. So maybe this isn't quite ready or there's just some firmware updates that need to come out. Um, but we haven't gotten this to work yet, even with its own, <laughs> its own adapter. Um, so maybe that's why adapters like this may come in handy. Um, but yeah, you can see that just coming out of the box. It is really nicely sized and small. So you could store this in your glove box or in the armrest. Um, if you need to carry it around, toss it in your backpack for whatever reason. Real small, I like it, but it does feel substantial. It's made from good, uh, solid plastic. Um, and even this uh, connector seems pretty strong. It's plastic, but it seems strong. The spring maybe is not as strong as some of the other connectors I've, I've, I've uh, reviewed or, or played with, but, but still pretty good. I think that'll last. And it does have a little locking mechanism here on the bottom. So basically, if you take a Tesla connector and pop that in, you can lock it so that way if you're at a public charger or out in, in a public area, somebody can't just come and yank on it and, and pull the Tesla connector out. This connector itself should stay locked into your vehicle if it's charging um, because the vehicle will latch onto that. But, uh, but yeah, that locking is just another little bit of security to make sure it's on tight, which you definitely want to have your connectors on tight before you plug into the vehicle um, and keep it in place. And then just that little bit of added security. Um, so yeah, and you can see that looks pretty small, like here's a standard J1772 connector. So that, you know, not much bigger than that. Sometimes uh, the adapters you get are this big and it goes on top of the Tesla connector. So you end up with a pretty long uh, connector, but this one keeps it pretty small. Um, so now let's go into some of the details that are on the box. I always like to say if it's important, they're going to put it on the box, um, especially when it comes to safety and things like that. So, uh, and then of course, if there's more information you need, um, we'll put the company's website and we'll put their Amazon link um, in the comments below. And that way you can get the latest and greatest pricing as well and look at other reviews that are out there for the product. Um, so yeah, it's the model EV JT02. Um, it's rated current is 80 amps, which is good. That means you can use this unit uh, basically for any level two uh, vehicle that any level two charging that you have out there so even a ford f-150 or a porsche taycan which i believe can accept up to the 80 amps and get you 19.2 um, kilowatts of charging you can use this for those vehicles but most people uh 48 amps 40 amps 32 amps is going to be be enough so this can obviously handle all that um, it's operating temperature is negative 22 degrees fahrenheit to 122 degrees fahrenheit so you can pretty much use this in all temperature conditions um, and that's standard for any um, basically any charging type of uh, equipment that you get it, it's going to be able to operate in those temperatures 
It's got an IP rating of IP65. Uh, so the six in there means it's uh, you know dust proof. Um, so if you're like in sandy conditions or a desert, something like that, a place with a lot of dust, this should do fine. And the, the five in the IP65 means it's uh, water resistant. So for the most part, if it's you know light drizzle, a little bit of rain, uh, you're gonna be all, be all right for in most weather conditions. Obviously, if it's downpouring, um, you may want to just be cautious or be careful or make sure you're under a cover. Um, but again, for the most part, as long as long as you're not submerging this thing in water, uh, you're gonna be all right. And it is made in China. Um, and the couple of certifications it's got on it, it's got the CE certification, which that's required for products, consumer electronics, to be sold in Europe. And that just means it meets the ROS uh, standards, the ROHS standards, so it doesn't contain um, a list of 10 chemicals they've got, you know, like mercury, chromium, lead, and, and several others. Um, and it also has the FCC certification, which that's in the U.S., and that just means this electronic product doesn't operate at a frequency to disturb, um, to disturb certain radio frequencies. It does not have a UL, the Underwriters Laboratory, or ETL, um, uh, certifications, uh, which are the U.S. safety certifications. They do their own safety testing, um, and you can go online and kind of see what all they do and, and just see what your comfort level is with that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what's there on the box, and I've showed you the adapter. So what we'll do now is we're going to use this on our mobile connector, so that's going to pull 32 amps, um, and we'll go try it out, let it run for a little bit, see how it does, see if it heats up or anything, and uh and then and give you the results all right all right y'all so now let's give it a try we're going to take the ev dance connector pop it onto the tesla connector lock it make sure it's nice and secure and typically you like to wait for about 30 seconds before you charge um, just if there's any communication that needs to take place typically there shouldn't be on an adapter like this but it just kind of just in case um, and make sure it's secure and then you plug into your vehicle and I like using the Rivian because it's real easy to tell uh, What's going on with the vehicle? So you just pop it in like you would any other J1772 Clicks into place so you can't pull it out and you'll see the lights kind of change colors and let you know what's going on If it's working or not. So yeah, it's starting to blink It's thinking about it and sometimes it takes time with these adapters so it turned red which means it's not didn't recognize it at first, and now it turned green. And that's normal on the Rivian. And most vehicles are doing that, but the Rivian at least has the lighting to let you see that's happening. And then now it's got the green light, and you can see the bar at the front, so we're pulling the charge. And we should be pulling about 7.5 to 7.6 kilowatts. We'll let that run for about, about an hour, make sure there's no heating issues or anything like that, and, uh, and then just let you know how it does on pulling the charge, which it shouldn't have any issues um, unless there's just something wrong with the adapter. So we'll pop in in about an hour. All right, y'all, so it's been about an hour um, that we were using the EV Dance adapter on the Tesla connector to charge up the Rivian and um, just feeling that, yeah, there's no heating issues at all. That just feels uh, cool to the touch. And we were pulling about 7.3 kilowatts for the full hour. Um, so a little lower than the 7.5 or 7.6 you might expect on a 32 amp pull. Um, but still not bad and it was holding that steady so you can kind of count on that um, And then to finish our charge We'll just hit that lever and it should acknowledge that the charge stopped and we'll just pull that right out and uh, Yeah, then if you want to get the adapter off you just unlock it and pull it off um, But yeah, that charge went well and again the beauty of this adapter is that it's just so small and it can go up to 80 amps So it can handle all level 2 charging. So yeah, if you've got any questions, let me know um, in the comments and I'll try to get those answered and thanks for tuning in. Hang loose y'all.